Chapter S. Expounders of the Dharma Theme. If they forget a line of this sutra, I will explain it again, enabling them to master it. Thereupon, the Bhagavad, wanting to elaborate on the meaning of this, further spoke these verses. If you wish to rid yourself of idleness, you should listen to this sutra. This sutra is rarely heard, and it is also difficult to accept. Suppose there were a thirsty man seeking for water by drilling into the earth on a high plane. He sees only dry earth and knows that there is far away. He gradually sits the moist earth turn into mud and knows with certainty that water is near. Oh, by Pyarja, you should know that those people who do not hear the Lotus Sutra are very far away from the Buddha as wisdom. If they hear this profound sutra, which brings resolution to the fox, and if they hear this king of sutras, and attentively contemplate it, know that these people are close to the Buddha as wisdom. If people want to expound this sutra, they should enter the Tathagata as chamber, put on the Tathagata as garments, and sit on the Tathagata as seat. They then should face the people without fear, so that they may extensively. 163. The Lotus Sutra. Illuminate and explain it to the assembly. The Tathagata as chamber is great compassion. His garments are gentleness and perseverance. And his seat is the emptiness of all existent things. After settling among them, they should expound the Dharma. Even if, when they expound this sutra, people discourage them with evil words, or attack them with swords, sticks, tiles, or stones. Being mindful of the Buddha, they should persevere. I open manifest my pure and solid form. In thousands of myriads of coins of lands, and teach the Dharma to sentient beings. For immeasurable coins of compass. If after my parent verba, there is someone who is able to teach this sutra, I will dispatch a transform fourfold assembly of monks. Nuns, laymen and lay women, to pay homage to this expounder of the Dharma. I will need the sentient beings and gather them together to let them hear the teaching. If anyone wishes to do ill to them with swords, sticks, tiles, or stones, then I will dispatch those transformed ones in order to guard them. If there is any expounder of the Dharma who recites this sutra in a secluded, tranquil place where there is no sound of human beings, I will then manifest my body of pure light 
If they forget a chapter or a verse, I will teach it to them, enabling them to master it. 164, 32b, Chapter X. If anyone perfects these qualities, if he teaches the fourfold assembly, or in a solitary place recites this sutra, such a person will be able to see me. If anyone abides in a secluded place, I will dispatch devas and gokis, yokas and kasas, to be an audience to their teaching. Such people teach the Dharma willingly and explain it without obstruction. Because all the Buddhas protect them, they gladden the great community of people. Anyone who closely attends an expounder of the Dharma will immediately attend the Bodhisattva path. Anyone who follows this as instructions will be able to meet Buddhas equal in number to the sands of the Ganges River. 165. Chapter 11. The appearance of a jewel stupa. At that time there appeared before the Buddha a seven jewel stupa, five. Hundred Eugenas in height and two hundred and fifty Eugenas both in length and wings, which emerged from the ground and hovered in the air. It was adorned with various jewels, had five thousand railings and thousands of myriads of chambers. It was decorated with innumerable flags and banners, and hanging jewel necklaces and myriads of coins of jewel bells hung from the top. The fragrance of tamla leaves and sandalwood trees exuded from all sides of the stupa, covering the world. The banners and umbrellas were composed of the seven jewels such as gold, silver, lapis lazuli, monarch, pearl, agate, pearl, and ruby, and they rose as high as the palaces of the world, protectors of the four quarters. The thirty Three devas ran down heavenly drama flowers in homage to the jewel stupa. The other thousands of myriads of coins of humans, and such non-humans as devas, angas, lokas, ganparvas, asuras, garuras, kainaras, and mehoragas also respected, honored, revered and praised the precious stupa by offering all kinds of flowers, perfumes, necklaces, flags, banners, and music. Then a tremendous voice issued forth in praise from the jewel stupa, saying, Splendid, splendid, O Kaiyuni. The Bhagavad teaches the Lotus Sutra to the Great Assembly, the instruction for Bodhisattvas and Tracer. Lore of the Buddhas, which is the wisdom attainable by every sentient being. Just so. Just so, O Kaiyuni Bhagavad. What you teach is true. Thereupon the fourfold assembly saw the great jewel stupa hovering 
in the air and also heard the voice that issued forth from the stupa. They all were pleased with the teaching and marveled at this unprecedented experience. They stood up from their seats, under Kaimuni with their palms, pressed together, and withdrew to one side. 167, 32C, the Lotus Sutra. At that time there was a golden Sattva called Mokratikvaitna, who, realizing that the devas, humans, and asuras of the entire world were puzzled, addressed the Buddha saying, O Bhagavad. Why has this jeweled stupa emerged from the earth? And why has this voice come forth from it? Then the Buddha told Bodhisattva Mokratikvaitna, the Tathgatanis, in this jeweled stupa, in the remote past, immeasurable, incalculable thousands of myriads of coins of worlds away in the east there was a land called Red Navisada. In that land there was a Buddha called Prabhupada. When this Buddha was practicing the Bodhisattva path in his previous lives he made a great thought, saying, If I become a Buddha, after my Paramurva, if the Lotus Sutra is being taught anywhere in all the lands of the ten directions, my stupa shall appear there so that this Sutra may be heard, and in order that I may bear testimony to it and praise it with the word, splendid. After the Buddha had perfected the path and immediately before his Paramurva, he addressed the monks among the great assembly of devas and humans, saying, after my Paramurva, anyone who wishes to pay me homage should build a great stupa. If there is anyone teaching the Lotus Sutra anywhere in the world of the Ten Directions, this Buddha makes a jewel stupa emerge out of the ground in that place through his transcendent powers and the power of his thought. He is in the stupa giving praise with the words, Splendid, Splendid, O Mokrati Vaitna. The Tathgata Prabhupada has now emerged from the earth within his stupa, so that he may hear the Lotus Sutra and give praise with the words, Splendid, Splendid. At that time Bodhisattva Mokratikvaitna spoke to the Buddha through the Tathgata as transcendent powers, saying, O oh, Bhagavad, we all want to See this Buddha as for the Buddha answered Bodhisattva Mosattva Mokratikvaitna, saying, This Buddha Prabhupada made a great thought, saying, Whenever my jewel stupa appears in the presence of a Buddha in order to hear the Lotus Sutra, if that Buddha wants to show my form, 168. Chapter 11. To the fourfold assembly he should gather into one place all his magically created forms that are teaching the Dharma in the words of the Ten Directions. After that my form will appear. Oh no, crazy, Vaitna.
I shall now gather all my magically created forms. Who are teaching the Dharma in the words of the Ten Directions? No Prati Vaidna spoke to the Buddha, saying, O Bhagavad. We also strongly wish to see the Bhagavad as magically created forms to honor and pay homage to them. Then the Buddha emitted a ray of light from the tuft of white hair between his eyebrows, and they immediately saw the Buddhas in five hundred myriads of coins of nameless of lands in the eastern direction equal in number to the sands of the Ganges River. In these lands the soil was of crystal and adorned with tracer trees and jeweled garments, and these lands were full of innumerable thousands of myriads of coins of bodhisattvas. Jewel drapes were hung everywhere and were covered with jeweled nets. All the Buddhas in these lands were teaching the Dharma in most harmonious voices. They also saw immeasurable thousands of myriads of coins of bodhisattvas filling all the lands and teaching the Dharma to sentient beings. The other directions to the south, north, and west, the four intermediary directions and the upper and lower regions were also illuminated by the ray of light emitted from the dust of white hair between the Buddha's eyebrows and they were also exactly like this. Then all the Buddhas in the ten directions each addressed the example of Bodhisattvas saying, O sons of a virtuous family. We will now go to the place where Kaimuni is in the summer and pay homage to the jeweled soup of the Tsukata Pracharana. At that time the summer was immediately purified, the earth was off. Lapis lazuli adorned with jewel trees, its roads laid out like a chessboard, and bordered with golden courts, and there were no villages, towns, cities, oceans, rivers, mountains, streams, forests, or groves. Very precious insects was bring Dharma flowers were spread everywhere on the earth, and it was covered with jeweled nets and drapes from which jeweled bells hung. With the exception of this assembly, the devils and human beings were all moved to other lands. 169 the Lotus Sutra. Then the Buddhas each took one great Bodhisattva as an attendant and arrived under a jewel tree in the sun world. Each jewel tree was five hundred Yujanas in height and adorned with branches.